Mapungubwe was an Iron Age settlement and kingdom which flourished between 1000 AD to 1300 AD. So just where was it located? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you the series. Um, subscribe if you've not done so and please turn on your notification buttons so you know when we have new episodes. Also share our videos with all your contacts. The ancient kingdom of Mapungubwe covered areas now in the Limpopo province and the border between South Africa, Zimbabwe and Botswana. The archaeological sites which mark the area um, is about 75 kilometers from Messina, close to the point where the Limpopo and Shashi rivers meet. Mapungubwe is believed to be the first organized state in southern Africa. In Shivenda language, the name Mapungubwe means stone monuments, which might be a reference to the large stone houses and walls of the kingdom. While in Sesotho, the word means heel of the jackal. The ancient kingdom is believed to have been founded by Bantu people who prospered there because of the savannah's suitability for cattle herding. The Bantu-speaking people who founded the kingdom of Mapungubwe were pastoralists. However, because the area has a large sandstone plateau and was easily defended, cattle herding and the growing of sorghum and cowpeas thrived and resulted in plenty of food and a surplus that could be traded for needed um, goods. The archaeological record shows that by the 10th century, there was already a marked increase in the number of domesticated cattle in the area, as well as um, cotton uh, a thriving cotton, uh, a thriving cotton cultivation and weaving. The area also was rich in copper, and must have had large numbers of elephants, which provided ivory and animal hides. There is also significant evidence to show that long before contact with Europe, the people of Mapungubwe. Uh, kingdom mined and traded in gold. One of the objects found by archaeologists in the area is believed to have been a scepter covered in rectangular beaten gold plates, similar to artworks found at the sites of the Great Zimbabwe. Other evidence of local gold working are small animal figurines also made from hammered sheets thousands of gold beads and fragments of gold bangles. Some of the archaeological remains found in the Mapungubwe uh, Plateau also indicate that the people traded with coastal areas which they reached through the Limpopo River. Some scholars actually suggest that the Great Zimbabwe Kingdom which evolved a little later than Mapungubwe in the 12th century, might have started out as a client state of Mapungubwe, and that Mapungubwe would also have benefited from locally sourced copper and gold trade that passed through from southwest Zimbabwe to the coastal kingdoms, uh, coastal city of Kosala. The excavated sites of Mapungubwe have also yielded glass beads from India, the fragments of a Chinese celadon vessels, all of which indicate that there was trading with far-flung places like India, China, and Arabia. The Mapungubwe kingdom had professional potters who produced pottery on a scale and on a scale which was large enough. And that's an, another indicator of how prosperous the society was.
Some of the uh, pottery excavated um, consist of decorated spherical vessels with short necks and uh, as well as beakers. Other art forms, um, other artworks that were found at the site were in the form of various animals, including giraffes, cattle, sheep, and goat, uh, goat figurines, as well as uh, small figures of highly stylized humans with elongated bodies and short limbs. Other small jewelry items found were made from copper or ivory. Now, the kings of Mapungubwe were very wealthy and owned large heads of cattle and precious materials that were acquired through trade. As a society which grew out of its reliance on um, agriculture, the rulers were also linked uh, with um, rainmaking um, to appeal uh, to the gods. Now, the king and his court lived in houses that were built out of stone on the highest level of the community's territory, which was a natural sand stone hill. The rest of the community lived in houses that were spread below uh, the hill. Now, when the rulers died, they were laid to rest with their ancestors at the top of the hillside in, a, in an area that was demarcated away from the royal dwellings, while commoners were buried in the surrounding uh, valley level. The Mapungubwe kingdom went into decline around the period when other kingdoms, which laid north of it, like uh, the Great Zimbabwe, followed by the kingdom of Mutapa, started to thrive. As was the case when uh, Europeans stumbled on the Great Zimbabwe, when they first found the city, the relics of uh, Mapungubwe, they also did not believe such impressive structures were built by black Africans. And uh, so they came up with all kinds of spurious theories which attributed the, this ancient African civilization to ancient Egyptians or Phoenicians uh, and, um, and all what not. Archaeology, however, has debunked all of that nonsense and there is overwhelming proof that both sites, um, that is um, Mapungubwe as well as the Great uh, Zimbabwe, were built by indigenous Africans who lived in the local areas. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee. It's the only way we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe if you've not yet done so and please turn on your notification button so you know when we have new episodes. Also, don't forget to share our videos with all your contacts and uh, keep those comments com uh, coming.